Hello again everyone, we are Gaming by Gaslight, and welcome back to another exciting episode of EU4 as Manchu. Now you're probably wondering yourself, or maybe sighing and groaning in disgust to yourself, going, Gaslight, you moron. This is the third episode in a row where you have left things in a different state than when you started off with. And I have another good explanation. I know, I'm full of amazing excuses, aren't I? Bear with me. What happened in our war with the Shagate, Ming decided to declare war on me. And as you may recall, the Ottomans had their own war going on down here. And basically what happened is the Ottomans won their war. I got a bunch of military acts. Like, I was trying to manage so hard. Like, you, you don't, you don't understand how hard I was trying to manage all the things. And basically the Ottomans kind of had a big, you know, F.U. kind of moment going on because they won their war and they just sat there doing nothing while the Ming were trying to rampage over me and I rage quit like five times and went to backup saves and basically what I finally managed to do and because it was so tedious and annoying and it probably would have taken like three episodes because I think it took an hour to micromanage using uh, like all kinds of stuff that seems to have actually and here's the other part that pisses me off uh, we actually had an economy last time, but now we have no economy. I mean, it just angers me so much. Why do we have no economy? Is it because of you? You're not costing that much. You're 52 years old, you're gonna die in like five days or something. <sighs> We're behind in everything, except for military tech. It doesn't really make sense to be buffing up military tech, I suppose. Um, but yeah, basically... Everything is going wrong, but and I had to fight and I had to micromanage for so long just to get a white piece out of the Ming. Like, I hope these bastards get, like, the biggest, ugliest, most hideous, hairy, disgusting Ming plosion that is known to the whole EU4 universe. Probably not gonna happen because I'm just not that lucky in life, but a man can dream. And when a man can dream, he can have hope. And where there's hope, then like, something, something, stuff. Anyway, uh, we have some rebel problems to deal with. And once we do that, we're going to go kill the Timurids. Because basically the plan is get into India, get as big and buff and like super cool as we can. Because the next time opportunity knocks, I want to grab Ming by the balls and feed them something, something, I don't know. I'm gonna get, like, the the levels of rage I was going through, I could not show on camera. I was at the point of practically, like, swearing at the screen. That's just, no one wants to see that. I hope no one wants to see that. I don't want, I don't want to see myself at my worst. I don't want you guys to see me at my worst. It was just, it was just rage and hate and despair all around. I'll be honest. Because it, it just felt like I, I couldn't win because there was just too many Ming bastards and not enough me, which pissed me off. And it, it really pissed me off since, as you may recall, I think it was just last episode, there was like, for the briefest moment, a little ming plosion. At least they hate the Ottomans, and the Ottomans hate them or something. Wait, actually, what's going on here? Yeah, go screw yourself, Ming. But, uh, let's see, 15, 16. So I have, like, three years, which is probably how long it's going to take in order to, uh, yeah. Let's see here. Um, hmm. Well, actually, this doesn't look as bad as it could, to be honest. I mean, it's not good. It's not completely terrible. I could actually survive this. Maybe. Where are these rebels? Over here? Okay, we'll kill the rebels, then we'll kill the Timurids, and hopefully do it in time to rip, uh, rip Ming a new one, so that I can feel better about myself. Also, I allied with Muscovy now, off camera as well, so basically, next time Ming comes knocking at my door, they are going to be in for a surprise. And hopefully it'll be a happy surprise for me. Oh my god. Why is my economy so shit? Like, I, I, I just I don't understand it. 
Well, I do. It's because it's all terrible land. It's angry land up here where, you know, and it's all just garbage everywhere. Uh, everything is garbage and awful and terrible and I'm just sad and disappointed. Sad and disappointed. Oh, good. Lowered unrest. I mean, we can't afford it, but we kind of have to, so screw them. Yellow shamanism? Why not? Uh, What's this? Green standard army? What do I need to do? Oh, crap. I actually lose manpower? I don't just get it for free? Oh. I'm disappointed in that. I, I thought that uh, with the banners and stuff, I got it for free. I have to have at least one stability. That's unfortunate. Because I, I don't have the admin points to do that. Uh, and this land is so awful that I'm just dying here. I mean, I could I could spend points to develop. I kind of wish when I did that I spent like half my points, half their points. Let's see. Oh, lose stability. Sure, why not? Do what you want. It's not like I care. I do care, but... I pretend I don't, so I don't cry. Or something like that. Oh, boy. I've got to be honest. I feel sometimes like the game has it out for me. I should probably also kill Kazan. Because I'm pretty sure Muscovy might decide not to come help me if, um... I mean, they like me and all. But they might decide not to help me if the Ming attack. I know mean, this will actually be interesting, because there'll be basically three great powers against one. And, yeah. This is crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. Ugh. Well, actually, it looks like slowly my economy is coming back together, so that's that's a plus. Korea can go screw themselves. Someday I will get revenge on the Koreans for all the pain and misery they have caused me. Well... I'll have revenge on everyone, really. Eventually, the whole world will... Oh, good. No guys... Guys are going away. I'll wait until they go down to, like, 50%, and then I'll start one... Oh, what's this? Ooh! Wow. Yes, an admin. What we need it most. Alright, what are we gonna have to do here? We have Kazaki dudes who are over here, duding around, and we have some Mongol dudes who are also duding around. Alright, I'm pretty sure they can take it from here, so I'm gonna wander on over here to Mongol territory. And hopefully, yeah. Deal with those rebels. Actually, let's see. Timurids, the Timurids have no allies. And if we look at their military force here. Scroll down. Doodly doo doo doo. Uh, we have... Yeah, I've really got to start raiding. What is, what's the old Mountain Blade saying? Less talking, more raiding? Actually, you know what? Screw the Mongol Separatists. Uh, they have, I have three years, approximately, which actually means, like, as soon as I start this war, it's immediately gonna jump up to 90%, just you watch. Uh, but... Uh, where, where are you going, sir? I, I, I changed my mind, I wanna, I wanna fight over here. In the shade, possibly. The shade of Persia. Alright, let's get, let's get her on. Ooh. I can take all kinds of land. It's delicious. Uh, I don't know. I don't even have any claims. Not that I care. I could release Afghanistan. That would be fun. Fun for the whole family. All right. So let's uh, let's get let's get this action going here. Yeah, that's right. You better run. Uh, I guess I'll drop a, a dude over there. Drop a dude over here, and conglomerate everyone over here, so that hopefully... Uh, what what are you doing? I mean, I appreciate the balls, but... Oh, holy shite! Are the Timurids that weak that they literally... Are they bankrupt? Is that what's going on? Because they have, like, their morale set to zero. That's insane. Bravo, bravo. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And after, after the, the absolute sh just shit fest that I didn't show with the war against Ming, this makes me feel a little bit warmer, a little bit fuzzier inside, a bit, a bit of hope for humanity, such as it is, and um, generally just 
good about life. I I'm feeling better about life, so thank you. Thank you all for being here. Makes me happy. Uh, and I, I do mean that. Thank you all for being here. It's what makes the channel a, a channel, you know? What do we got going on over here? That's those Mongols now. Yeah, didn't I tell you? It said for years. It hasn't even been won. It immediately, immediately, these, uh, these people, as they like to call themselves, these Mongols, have uh, shown that they are horrible, disgusting people. Um, and I would like to reset you guys to be siege focused so that hopefully you'll get some sieging done while I go take care of my Mongol friends over here. Actually, I'd probably save myself a lot of trouble if I either just culture convert it or... Well, I don't really want to culture convert. But that would save me some trouble and would make the land slightly more valuable. But considering how garbage tier the land is anyway, I guess it's not worth it. Again, just to reiterate, it would be really nice if the Ming would just explode on themselves. Now, considering how similar these guys are in age... And considering the fact that they are not royal married to anyone but Korea, there is a moderate, slim, tiny little chance that both the heir and ruler will die, and then there'll be some kind of regency council thing, which will make my life easier, because then what will happen is uh, I won't have to deal with those assholes for a while, and with any luck, they will also... Oh, nice. Our guy is a tactical genius. That's good. That's actually really useful for my purposes. Could you guys actually, like, siege the- oh, you, I guess there's guys to kill over there. I guess I can understand that. Why do I always get bad events? Always. Like, could I get a good event for once? I feel sometimes like I'm cursed to always get bad events when I'm playing as the hordes. I, I assume it's because it, it's just hard to keep up in tech. So what ends up happening is you kind of fall behind. Um, another thing I'd also like to do is keep buffing my capital. Slowly over time. Really? I buff it and suddenly people are angry? Alright. But anyway, the reasoning for that is because I, I would like to pick up Le Renaissance. Which is not how you say the Renaissance. Unless you are trying to say it in a terrible sounding accent. I'm never going to be able to afford this, by the way. I'm not going to be able to embrace colonialism until, like, you know, like, it's time for the printing press to come out. Which, interesting thing about the printing press, I don't, I'm not a master of history, but if I recall correctly, didn't the Chinese actually independently invent a printing press either before or around the same time the Europeans did? So it makes it kind of weird that the printing press can only show up in overall, in yonder Europe, where uh, Protestantism or uh, the Reformation exists. Now... I know the reason for that. It's because it, it's not really... The printing press is not really representing the printing press itself. It's representing the idea behind the printing press, which was the rapid f free spread of information. Which I think we can all agree is good. Governments don't like it, and anything that pisses the government off is probably good. Possibly. Maybe. I mean, you know, the government totally has our best interests at heart. It's definitely, there's definitely no subliminal propaganda in there anywhere. And, uh, or is there? But seriously, in all seriousness, um, yeah. It's actually, apparently, if I recall my history correctly, uh, the origin of copyright law also spreads with the printing press, because, in fact, the whole idea of copyright, as I recall, initially wasn't so much to, if I'm not getting this confused with other, other important historical moments is the fact that the original idea of copyright, or at least something similar, was actually more so about the censorship of information, because naturally, as you can imagine, governments didn't exactly take too kindly to uh, these free ideas and independent thoughts that their peasants were having. Seriously. I mean, we take it for granted today, but books, like, just... The ability to rapidly spread information that the printing press caused is, well, I mean, anyone who studies history or just, I guess, thinks about it for a second, you can probably get the idea that it was, like, basically the equivalent of the internet of its day. And just the revolutionary way of sharing information 
where for once it was like a long, slow, tedious process to like copy books and stuff, it suddenly became really, really easy to just rapidly get like pamphlets and letters and books and magazines eventually and all kinds of cool information and you just spread that to the masses and it was awesome and the Mongols are actually going away now. That's right, you better go away. Silly Mongols. Actually, what happened there, no doubt, is the like 10 million year penalty for lowering autonomy finally went away. You know what? It, it feels like everything is coming up Manchu for once in my life, so I'm feeling much better. Especially because it actually hasn't been the greatest of weeks for me. So finally, having. Oh crap, and our truce with the Ming is over. Which means inevitably, the Ming are going to declare war on me at the most inopportune time as is possible and going to make me cry and and just generally be angry about life. But then again, maybe not, because I also have Russia on my side. And anyone who's anyone knows that unless you are the Mongols, you don't go pissing off Mother Russia. Well, I guess also if you're Cold War America, you can probably afford to piss off the Russians a little bit. But not too much or else someone's going to press the button. And no one wants the button to get pressed. If the button ever gets pressed, we're all dead. That's basically the gist of history, as far as I'm concerned. Alright, a full 100% just wipe to the bad guys. Good stuff, good stuff. And we're not going to be able to eat them all in this one war, but I'm going to want to make sure that we are at the very least that we touch Persia so we can go to war with them. Because again, we are getting to a point now where we are starting to hit the rich, juicy provinces. At least I think we are. Well, they're mostly good. I mean, quite a few of them, even if I raise them once, they're not going to immediately turn into shit. So that's good, I guess. Oh boy. I love playing as a horde, even if it's really hard to have a stable economy. I kind of wish they would change, like, I don't think the horde mechanics quite fit with the whole states and provinces thing. Because you wouldn't really expect a horde to care about that, because that kind of implies actual infrastructure. It'd be kind of nice if, um, I don't know. I don't know how you'd balance this. And especially because it's not like this stuff's going to be, like, particularly useful anyway. But it'd be kind of nice if hordes just, like, everything was, like, halfway between a state and a province. Something like that. Like, there would be no state maintenance for hordes. I mean, that might make hordes too more too powerful. I mean, just from the money we're making, just sucking out of our enemies. Oh no, we're going to lose our great power status. Well, that just won't do at all. I really need to get the Renaissance to start spreading here. It'd be kind of nice if there was a random event where you could just force the Renaissance to show up. That would be nice. I would like that a lot. Uh, let's see here. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Let's, uh, let's get a look at development for a second here. Alright, so I want you and you. Basically, everything that is yellow. If we can. So that, give me all your money. Uh, let's see, we'll take that away. Give me more reparations instead. And I think that'll do. All right, I'm also going to get rid of this fort because I don't believe in forts. I'm going to just eat that, eat some of this. I'll get that horde unity up. I'm going to feed most of this to our friend, Kiva. But I'm going to keep this one province right here. Because if I keep this province, then I can attack Persia and expand my power Ever yonder, or something. Ever wider, ever fervor. Just eat everything. Because when you're a horde, you're if you're not busy raiding, you're getting busy dying. And if you're getting busy dying, you're not playing the horde game right. Or something like that. That's the logic I go with. And it's worked out pretty well so far. Uh, I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. And basically, just let your let your friends, uh, your vassals, that is, uh, let them... Actually, to be honest, I should have been a bit more strategic with this and eaten a little bit from here. 
so that I could have fed your or Yarkand so that all the rebels don't spawn just over there. Uh, and we're also going to do some of this. And because we're still ahead of time here. Actually, to be honest, because of that big old 60% penalty, I'm probably better off. I hate the fact that I have to manually basically spread this. Oh, and I've sped all... I've spent all my admin points. I hate the fact that I have to manually spread the renaissance. Ugh. It'd be kind of nice if just after 1550 or something, like if maybe every two institutions, then the oldest one that hasn't been embraced yet just starts spreading. Or if it just spread faster, that would be nice as well. But that would probably make life too easy and we can't be having that, so... Yeah, all right. Let's uh, do some of this and some of that. I should have made sure this guy was in enemy territory so that, you know, I don't have to walk all the way around. In fact, I should have taken this province, which is actually a really good province, which we'll take next time, I guess. And then we can connect our our borders easier so we don't have to do this awkward walking around thing. Um, yeah. All right, I feel... I feel lately that my commentary has, be, has become increasingly unhinged. Maybe that's just me. But if I am sounding crazier than usual, please don't hesitate to tell me I'm crazy. Because I'd rather know if I was crazy than, you know, if I was not. Or something something, I don't know. The important thing is, Yarkin, why did you insult me? That's not very nice. Why would you do that? Why are you doing that? The good thing, of course, uh, with Yarkin here is that I can basically turn this one state that they're part of immediately into... Uh, or I can turn it from its a territory to a state for free without having to recore everything, which is another good benefit of having vassals. And it's actually, it occurs to me, because uh, of the expenses related to embracing institutions, it's actually probably my interests to uh, probably keep Kiva around and make them as big as possible. Because what that'll do is it'll mean that I have less development myself, which means it'll be less expensive for me to embrace institutions, especially because we have, like, the worst economy known to man that is... Well, actually, then again, it's based on the economy that 99% of pretty much em all empires have uh, faced at one point or another, and that, of course, is uh, slavery. Pretty much every empire, to my knowledge, that has ever existed on planet Earth, up until the Industrial Revolution, any great empire anyway, has been built on the backs of slaves. I mean, the quality of life for slaves varied depending on what time period you were in, but in general it was, you know, not the same as being a free person. And most people like being free, so I imagine, of course then again, kind of makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, back in the olden days, like way back when basically most people were either serfs or, or slaves, or just generally you didn't actually have that much autonomy, I mean, would people even really appreciate their freedom? Like, would people appreciate the freedom we have today? Well, of course they would. Of course, that's a silly question. Of course people would appreciate having the freedom we have today. But it kind of makes you think, doesn't it? Because, like, the the notions of freedom we have today like, just didn't exist for most of history. You were basically just a cog in a machine. You have a brick in the wall. Damn, who the heck is Gujarat and why do I care about them? They're just a little nub down here. Uh, I would like to go to war with you. Would bring the Mamluks in. Unfortunately... War exhaustion? You're a lucky nation. How dare you have war exhaustion? How dare you, sir? War exhaustion. Pfft. You know what? I should hire... Do I have a Diplo rep guy? I do not. Of course I don't. When it would be useful... Ooh, land maintenance modifier. That probably doesn't... Actually, apparently that translates into me paying exactly the same amount of money I did before, because the savings he gets me is equal to what it costs to pay him, so plus one for me. Plus we'll get more manpower in our capital, which is always a good thing. Anyway, um, it is probably time, I guess, to wrap things up, so uh, basically, the plan next, unless... Actually, no, I do not want to get into... I feel like it might be a bit too late for me to get into India. That's probably silly, but what tends to happen in India is eventually you end up with like a one or two really big blobs. 
And actually, that's probably a lot less dangerous than what it is right now, because you have several reasonably sized blobs who are all allied with each other. And because having these separate nations results in having, inexplicably, more force limit than if they were one na Well, then again, I guess bigger the nation, harder it is to administer, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it's a, it's a really dangerous place to get involved in India if you're not a superpower. And I, unfortunately, am not a superpower yet. Do not let this fool you. I may be 8th on the superpowers list, but I am not really a superpower. Not that super at all. At least I don't feel very super. But anyway, that's the story for another time. I think it's time to wrap this episode up, though, before I go any crazier than before. But basically, the key idea here is... I want to go to War of Persia. Might be better to go to War of Kazan, actually, because they have no allies, and... If we can make it so we're touching Muscovy, um, yeah, because I guess it's going to be an interesting balance issue because I want to, I want to touch Muscovy because that'll make it more likely they'll join my wars and stuff against the Ming, so I'll have direct access to the enemy. But they are inevitably going to want this land. Actually, they don't want this land. At least not right now. They will, but they don't want it right now. So. Interesting thoughts. I mean, in Kazan, it's not really all that well-developed. I mean, no, it's actually mostly garbage tier territory, but there is some occasional speckles of deliciousness to be found. So, like this, which we can get delightful rating and then some economy eventually. So it might actually be worth ripping a hole through Kazan Actually, I guess that would be a good idea, because basically if I take Rin and then enough provinces to touch Muscovy, uh, basically, um, Crimea belongs to the Ottomans as a vassal. And they've actually almost annexed them, which is going to make the Ottomans even more powerful. Why did they even add an event where Crimea can just for free become a vassal of the Ottomans? Uh, as if the Ottomans needed any more buffs. It's like the people at Paradox are sadistic people who, like making life harder by making, like, already the most indisputably powerful nation on Earth. Which actually makes me think. You know what would be a really fun thing to see at some point is Ming versus the Ottomans? If I ever get a multiplayer thing going, which, you know, I say that now, but don't expect it in any time in the immediate future, but if I ever find anyone who also plays EU4 and can get something going here and, you know, just schedules and free time and just stuff works out. It would be interesting to have some kind of uh, competition where basically we each try expanding towards the other and then, you know, a big Batman v Superman-esque uh, battle royale to the death, you know, except it, unlike Batman v Superman, it's actually good. Uh, anyway, I'm rambling, so let's wrap this episode up. In the meanwhile, until next time and all that good stuff, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video.